Hey, what's going on everyone? In this video, we're finally going to see how backpropagation calculates the gradient of the loss function with respect to the weights in a neural network. So let's get to it. So we're now on video number four in our journey through understanding backpropagation. In our last video, we focused on how we can mathematically express certain facts about the training process. Now we're going to be using these expressions to help us differentiate the loss of the neural network with respect to the weights. Recall from our video that covered the intuition for backpropagation that for stochastic gradient descent to update the weights of the network, it first needs to calculate the gradient of the loss with respect to these weights. And calculating this gradient is exactly what we'll be focusing on in this video. We're first going to start out by checking out the equation that backprop uses to differentiate the loss with respect to the weights. We'll see that this equation is made up of multiple terms, so next we'll break down and focus on each of these terms individually. Lastly, we'll take the results from each term and combine them to obtain the final result, which will be the gradient of the loss function. All right, let's begin. All right, we're first going to start out by checking out the equation that we're going to be working with to differentiate the loss. And remember, we're going to be differentiating the loss with respect to the weights in the neural network. But for simplicity, we're going to be working with one individual weight and showing how to calculate the gradient with respect to this one weight. And then at the end of the video, we're going to be able to generalize our results to any weight in the network. So the single weight that we'll be working with to differentiate the loss against is going to be the weight that connects node 2 in layer big L minus 1 to node 1 in our output layer big L. And this weight is denoted as this, where we have W subscript 1, 2, superscript big L. And remember, we covered the notation for each of these terms in full depth in our video on the notation for backpropagation. So be sure to check that out if this looks a little bit strange to you. Now, one thing to note is that throughout this video, since we're focusing on this one weight here, I'm not going to take the time to emphasize the superscript verbally whenever speaking on these terms. So in the notebook here, I have the superscript labeled for each term, but when speaking, rather than saying weight sub one two superscript big L, I'm going to leave off that big L just so that these terms sound more natural verbally. The one exception will be if I'm also talking about another layer, then I'll be sure to say that verbally so that you understand whether I'm talking about the output layer big L or maybe the layer that comes before it big L minus one. All right, so back to the main topic at hand here, which is differentiating this loss for this one single input with respect to the weight that we've chosen to work with here. And this derivative is going to look like this where this notation represents the partial derivative of this loss for a single input with respect to the weight that we've chosen to work with. So when we're taking the derivative in this way, what we can think about this meaning is if we change weight one, two by a little bit, then how is that going to affect the overall loss? All right, so when we think about how changing this weight is going to affect our loss overall, we can think about before it affects our loss, it's going to affect the overall input for this particular node. And so if this input changes, then in turn, it's going to change the output of this node, the activation output. And then with the activation output changing, that ultimately is going to update the loss. So if we kind of work backwards from that idea, we can think of our loss is depending on this activation output here. And this activation output depends on the input that is coming into this node. And this input depends on the weight that we're updating. So we have a bunch of dependencies between these terms. And we saw that in the last video where we showed that the loss function is actually a composition of functions. So with this, the chain rule tells us that to differentiate the loss with respect to the weight that we've chosen to work with, we're going to need to take the product of the derivatives of the composed function. So this product of derivatives looks like this. 
So on the left hand side, we have what we're trying to solve, which is the derivative of the loss with respect to the weight we've chosen to work with, weight 1, 2. And that's going to be equal to the derivative of the loss with respect to the activation output for node 1 times the derivative of the activation output for node 1 with respect to the input to node 1 times the derivative of the input for node 1 with respect to weight 1, 2. So this equation here is ultimately what we need to solve to calculate the gradient of the loss with respect to this one individual weight. So to do this, we're going to break down each term individually and see what we get. So let's focus on the first term, which is the derivative of the loss with respect to the activation output for node 1 in the output layer. From our previous video, we know that the loss is equal to the sum of the squared errors of all the nodes in the output layer. So we can just substitute this sum here for our loss whenever we're calculating the derivative of the loss with respect to this activation output for node 1. So to calculate this derivative, let's first expand this sum. Then due to the linearity of this summation operation, we can pull this derivative through because the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. So now we need to differentiate each one of these terms with respect to the activation output for node 1, a sub 1. And if we visually inspect each of these four terms, we can see that only one of them contains a sub 1. So that means that all the other three terms, whenever we differentiate them with respect to a sub 1, are just going to turn to 0. So then differentiating this one individual term that does contain a sub 1, we use the power rule. And so the derivative of this term with respect to a sub 1 is this, 2 times the difference of a sub 1 and y sub 1. So this result means that if the activation output for node 1 changes by just a little bit, then the loss is going to respond with a change that's equal to 2 times the difference of the activation output a sub 1 and the desired output y sub 1. All right, so now we have the result for the first term. Let's go ahead and move on to the second term now. The second term is the derivative of a sub 1 with respect to z sub 1. So the derivative of the activation output for node 1 with respect to the input to node 1. From our last video, we know that for each node j, we have a sub j equal to g of z sub j. And remember, g is just the activation function for this particular layer. Now, for our specific example, we are working with node 1 in our output layer. So that means j is equal to 1. So substituting 1 for j, we now have the activation output for node 1 is equal to the value of the activation function at the input for node 1. All right, so now we can just take what's on the right-hand side here and substitute it in for our derivative. And when we differentiate this with respect to z sub 1, we just get g prime of z sub 1. And that's because a sub 1 is a direct function of z sub 1 by definition. So that sums up the result for our second term. Let's go ahead and move on to the third term now. The third term is the derivative of z sub 1 with respect to weight 1, 2. So the derivative of the input for node 1 in our output layer with respect to the weight that connects node 2 in layer big L minus 1 to node 1 in our output layer. We know from previous discussions that for any node j in our output layer, the input for that node is equal to the weighted sum of the activation outputs from the last layer. And in our case, in this example, we are working with node number 1 in our output layer, so our j equals 1. And so we substitute in 1 for j, and that gives us the input for node number 1 in the output layer is equal to this weighted sum on the right-hand side. So therefore, to differentiate z sub 1 with respect to this particular weight, we can substitute this sum on the right-hand side for z to get this. And we'll go ahead and scroll down a little bit. 
And similar to what we did for our last term that we were working with, we are going to expand this sum. Then after expanding the sum, again, due to the linearity of the summation operation, we can pull this derivative through to take the derivative of each of the terms within the sum. And again, that's because the derivative of a sum is equal to the sum of the derivatives. So now we're looking to differentiate each of these terms with respect to weight sub 1, 2. And if we visually inspect each of these terms, we can see that actually only one of them contains weight sub 1, 2. So then for all of these terms that don't contain this weight, when we differentiate them with respect to this weight, they're going to become zero. Now if we differentiate our one term that does have this weight in it, then using the power rule, we can see that the derivative of this term here is equal to the activation output for node 2 in the previous layer. So then we can interpret this result as saying that the input for node 1 in our output layer will respond to a small change in weight sub 1, 2 by an amount equal to the activation output for node 2 in the previous layer, big L minus 1. All right, so now we've broken down each term. Let's combine the results that we got for each and then look at the overall result of the original equation that we started out with. So here is our original equation for finding the derivative of the loss with respect to this weight. Now we broke down each term on the right hand side and obtained the results here. So what this means is that if we change this one individual weight by a small amount, then the loss of the network is going to respond with a change equal to the amount of this product. So now we've seen how to calculate the derivative of the loss with respect to one individual weight for one individual training sample. If we wanted to see how to calculate the derivative of the loss with respect to this same particular weight, but for all n training samples rather than just one, then we calculate the average derivative of the loss function over all n training samples. And that would look like this. So this term here is exactly like the one that we've been working with, except for the i is variable, because as you can see from the sum, we're running from i equals 0 to n minus 1, where n is our number of training samples. So then we're summing the result for each of those derivatives, and then we're dividing that sum by n. So that's going to give us the average derivative of the loss over all n training samples. And then we would do this same process for each weight in the network to calculate the derivative of the loss with respect to all the weights. So in this video, we were just seeing everything in regards to this one particular weight, weight sub 1, 2 in the output layer. But everything that we did in this video could be applied to any weight in the network. At this point, you should now understand mathematically how backpropagation calculates the gradient of the loss with respect to the weights in the network. You should also have a solid grip on all the intermediate steps needed to do this calculation, and you should now be able to generalize the result we obtained for a single weight and a single sample to all the weights in the network for all training samples. Now, we still haven't hit the point completely home by discussing the math that underlies the backwards movement of backpropagation that we discussed whenever we covered the intuition for backprop. Don't worry, we'll be doing that in the next video. For now, if you have any questions about any of the calculations we covered, whether for the first calculation, the last calculation, or anything we discussed in this video, let's discuss it in the comments. Thanks for watching. See you next time.